Hello everyone. Welcome back to this online class. Today we are going to look at uh, how to form partial differential equations. And for example, we are required to eliminate the arbitrary function f from the primitive given by z squared is equals to 2x plus 2y plus f of x over y. Now there are three methods of eliminating the arbitrary function f from that primitive. The first method is what we are calling, we are, we are going to use implicit differentiation. This is using implicit differentiation. So in this method, you say let, let u be equal to x over y so that z squared is equals to 2x plus 2y plus f of u. So u is equals to x over y. So from here, let me use another color, from this expression for u, we can find the partial derivatives of u. So partial u with respect to x is the same as one over y. Partial u with respect to y is equals to negative x over y squared. So let's also differentiate this equation partially with respect to x and also with respect to y. So when you differentiate this with respect uh, to x, we are going to get 2z times partial z with respect to x is equals to 2, remember y is constant, plus f prime of u times partial u with respect to x. And so this you can write as, you can write this as, 2zp, remember p is the same as partial z with respect to x, the small p, is equals to 2 plus f prime of u, partial u with respect to x, that one we got 1 over y. Or, this is the same as f prime of u is equals to I want to make it the subject. So I'll have to take two to the right hand side. So that is uh, y times two zp minus two. Let me call this equation star. Also, if we differentiate the same equation, if we differentiate this equation, the one I have ticked, now with respect to y, we are going to get this 2z times partial z partial y. Now x is constant, so that will give us 2 plus f prime of u times partial u with respect to y. If I replace uh, partial z partial y by q, and uh, partial u partial y by negative x over y squared, you're going to get this, or 2zq is equals to 2 minus f prime of u times x over y squared. Minus, because this was a minus, you take care of the negative that is here. That's why it is a minus. Again, we can make... Uh, f prime of u the subject f prime of u is equals to so let, let me cross multiply that means it will be y squared over x of course there's a negative i will take it this to the left so times 2 minus 2 z q if you make it the subject, you get that. Call this equation 
star star. Look at the two equations, star and star star. You realize that uh, the left hand sides are the same, so we equate the right hand sides. So from equation star and star star, we equate the right hand side so that we have from star we have y and to 2zp minus 2 should be equal to y squared over x into 2 minus 2z cube. If I multiply by x on both sides, we are going to get this uh, because uh, that will be xy into 2. Of course, even 2 is common. Let me just write 2zp minus 2 is equals to y squared 2 minus 2z q. Factor out what is common. You can write or I can see 2y is common. Then this x into zp minus 1 is equals to, again, here we have 2y squared into 1 minus z q. And you see the 2 will cancel and y will cancel with one of the y's so that we have x into zp minus 1 is equals to y into 1 minus z q of which if you open the bracket you have xzp minus x is equals to y minus yz q if you rearrange you are going to get xzp plus yz q is equals to x plus y so that is the pde that we have formed by eliminating the arbitrary function f is the first method. Let's also look at another method, method two. We'll write method two. In this method, you rewrite, rewrite the primitive in the form in the form phi of uv is equals to zero and treat z, treat z as a function. Of x and y. So let me show you how to rewrite that uh, given primitive. I want it in the form of phi of uv is equals to zero. So this is what you're going to do. You see the 2x plus 2y, you're going to take it to the left hand side. So that we have z squared minus 2x minus 2y is equals to f of x, y. So this thing can now be written as, you will have, let me take this up. Just a minute. We now have z squared minus 2x minus 2y is equals to f of x over y. So that, that's what you have. Then now, this left hand side, The left hand side should be one of the parameters, the second parameter. So that this can now be written as phi of x over y comma z squared minus 2x minus 2y is equals to zero. The left hand side becomes the second parameter. So in this case now, this is our u and this other one is our v. So you now say let, let u be equal to x over y 
and let V be equal to Z squared minus 2X minus 2Y. And take note that here we treat Z as a function of X and Y. Very important. Let's get the partial derivatives of u. So you write, uh, even before you differentiate. So that means therefore, our phi of uv is equals to zero. We call this equation star. So let, let's get partial u partial x, that is one over y, partial u partial y is negative x over y squared, partial v partial x, that is the same as, remember inside z there is x, so that is 2z times partial z partial x, minus two, which you can also write as two Z P minus two. Also partial V with respect to Y, partial V with respect to Y is the same as two Z times partial Z with respect to Y minus two, which you can write as two Z Q minus two. So now let's differentiate equation star, differentiate, differentiate star with respect to X. We are using chain rule for a function of several variables. So we are going to have partial phi with respect to u, partial u, partial x, plus partial phi with respect to v, partial v, partial x, that should give us zero. If I make the substitutions, partial phi with respect to u can be written as phi subscript to u, and u with respect to x, that is, uh, we got one over y, then I can see partial phi with respect to V, write this as phi subscript V. Then V with respect to X, that was two ZP minus two is equals to zero. <laughs> this thing can also be written as, or, phi subscript u over phi subscript v is equals to, remember I'm making that the subject, is equals to two minus two zp divided by one over y, which is the same as two y into one minus zp. That's what you get if you make it the subject. So let's see again how to differentiate with respect to y, what are we going to get? Let me call this equation number one. Again, I want to differentiate. I want to differentiate equation star partially with respect to y. What are we going to get? We are going to get, again, using general, we are going to get partial phi, partial u, times partial u, partial x, no, not x, but y, is now y, plus partial phi, partial v, times partial v, partial y, is equals to zero. And this can now be written as phi u, now u with respect to y, we got, uh, negative x over y squared. 
then plus phi subscript v v with respect to y we got 2z q minus 2 and this is supposed to be equal to 0. I can now make uh, you can just say or phi subscript u over phi subscript v is equals to uh, 2 minus 2z q we are dividing this by negative x over y squared. How else can you write this? This is the same as y squared over x times 2z q minus 2. And the 2 is common. This can be written as uh, 2y squared over x into z q minus 1. That's what you get when you differentiate equation star with respect to y. So call this uh, Roman 2. Now, look at uh, equations Roman 1 and Roman 2. On the left hand sides, they are the same. So we can now equate the right hand sides of those two equations. So from those two equations, we can say therefore, we can now say that uh, 2y into 1 minus zp should be the same as 2y squared over x into zq minus 1. If you cross multiply by x, we are going to get this 2xy into 1 minus zp is equals to 2y squared into zq minus 1. And now we can simplify. You see that 2 will cancel with this other 2. Y will cancel with one of the Y's. So you can just say or X times 1 minus ZP should be equal to Y times ZQ minus 1. And if you open the bracket, if you open the bracket, we'll have X minus XZP equal to yzq minus y. And this can be rearranged. This can be rearranged to get this. You can rearrange this to get uh, xzp plus yzq is equals to x plus y. I have rearranged it, and so this is the required PDE. It has no arbitrary function. So this is a PDE of the first order. Look at the answer we have found in method two, and also look at the answer we have found in method one. They are the same. And I told you there are three methods. So we have the third one. Just discuss it here. So method three. Method number three is what we are calling uh, Lagrange method. Lagrange method of elimination. How does it work? Is how it works. First of all, you must rewrite the first step. You have to rewrite the given primitive in the form of phi of u v is equals to zero. Look at what we got because we did that in method two. Phi of u v is equals to zero. What did we get? It was phi of x over y comma z squared minus two x minus two. Why? And now in this method, we don't, don't treat z as a function. 
don't don't treat z as a function of x and y that is what is important in this method we don't treat z as a function of x and y so when you're differentiating u and v you even differentiate it with respect to z because now z does not depend on x and y that's very important z is not a function not a function of x and y so now let's get the partial derivatives of u so here our u is equals to x over y and our v is equals to z squared minus 2x minus 2y so the partial derivatives partial u with respect to x that is negative not negative uh, let's differentiate x while keeping y constant so that is one over y partial u with respect to y is equals to negative x over y squared and partial u with respect to z is equals to zero it's not z in u similarly partial v with respect to x that is equals to negative two partial v with respect to y again this is equals to negative two and partial v with respect to z this is equals to two z very important now we need to find the direction cosines of u and v at any point x y z so direction cosines of u and v at point x y z there are three direction cosines the p t capital q capital and r capital so the first one is p capital our p is defined as the jacobian of u v with respect to y z so that is equals to the determinant of partial u partial y partial v partial not partial v that's partial u let me change that partial u partial z then here we have partial v partial y partial v partial z jacobian if you replace the partial derivative we are going to get this u with respect to y we got negative x over y squared with respect to z is zero v with respect to y is negative two v with respect to z is two z and so it is determinant of that matrix multiply this then also this one minus so we'll have negative two x z over y squared then you subtract zero which i don't need to write that is p capital now let's find q capital q is equals to the jacobian of u v with respect 
to z x these definitions are very important even the order of those jacobians are very important if you just change the order you are not going to get the correct uh, direction cosine so this equals to determinant of partial u partial z partial u partial x partial v partial z and partial v partial x let us replace the partial derivatives u with respect to z that is zero u with respect to x is one over y v with respect to z that is two z and uh, v with respect to x is negative two determinant so multiply this those elements subtract the product of the other elements so this will give us of course it is zero minus which i don't even i don't even need to write the zero so just a negative 2z over y and lastly r capital is equals to the jacobian of u v with respect to x y again we need to write this as determinant of a two by two matrix so this can now be written as the determinant of partial u partial x partial u partial y partial v partial x partial v partial y one and when you replace the partial derivatives u with respect to x we got one over y u with respect to y we got negative x over y squared v with respect to x we got negative two and v with respect to y we also got negative two that is determinant so let, let's work out multiply these elements then subtract the, other, the product of these other elements along the leading diagonal we get negative 2 over y minus 2x over y squared now we have found the direction cosines how should our pde be written when you have this direction cosines so the required pde should now take the form let me write it here so our pde should take the general form p capital times the small p plus q capital times the small q is equals to r capital let us replace them our p capital we got negative 2xz over y squared then this is p then q plus q and q is also negative so just minus 2z over y times the small q is equals to r let me factor the negative that's negative uh, 2 over y minus 2x over y squared you see this thing can we, we can be able to factorize this uh, equation or simplify the 2 is common so the negative 2 will cancel 2 2 2 and 2 even the negative will disappear that will disappear so that everything is positive so this can now be written as xz over y squared p plus z over y q is equals to 1 over y 
plus x over y squared. And if I multiply both sides by y squared, we are going to get this. Multiply by y squared. So the whole of this equation, we are multiplying both sides by y squared, both left and right hand side. We are going to get x z p plus y z q is equals to y plus x. So we can just write that as x plus y it's still the same. Let me write x plus y. So look at what we have found. This is the PDE that we have formed as a result of eliminating the arbitrary function f or phi from the given primitive. So those are the three methods of solving or simply forming partial differential equations. When you're given an arbitrary function that you need to eliminate. eliminate. So next time when you meet, we look at other problems in partial differential equations. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is Professor Francis Okech. When you go to the YouTube search, type Prof Francis Okech and you'll find me right there. Also, don't forget to comment share and like this video. Bye-bye.